Welcome to Asbury. I'm Brother Hammett, and I'm so glad that you're with us today. As you prepare to worship with us on our live stream, I invite you to make space wherever you are for worship, if you're able. Uh, you may want to silence your devices and make yourself comfortable, maybe light some candles. Please do take just a moment and let us know that you're here. You can do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, the first way is to scan the QR code on your screen. All you have to do is open the camera on your phone or smart device and aim it at the screen, and you'll receive an invitation to open our sign-in webpage. Or you can just make a comment in the chat or like the video. If you're looking for a church home, you're always welcome at Asbury. If you'd like to visit about joining the Asbury family, just email me at the address below, and I'd be glad to uh, work out a time when we could visit. I pray that God blesses you through this service today. We'll begin in just a moment. Good morning. Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. It is an absolute joy to be in worship with you today. I'm Nick Shimmer. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, my colleague is Reverend Hammond Evans, and he'll be delivering today's message. We're going to continue on with the series, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, and this week, we're going to look at Jesus' encounter uh, with a man who has a disability. And so uh, I pray that this is a, a time of powerful worship to you and that the music and the message is a blessing to you. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started with our worship this morning morning. First of all, please, please, please log your attendance when you get a chance. Uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, you have a, a little connect tab attached to your bulletin. You can do your attendance that way and just drop it in the offering plate. If you're watching online, there should be a QR code that you can scan. Uh, we are currently in the process of taking uh, donations for our new diaper pantry. I touched on that last week, but if you weren't here or you missed that, uh, our food pantry is expanding to include a diaper ministry. And so we'd like to offer diapers and wipes and diaper cream and all that uh, wonderful stuff that you need when you have a little one. Uh, there's a big need for that in our community with those we serve. And so uh, we are taking donations for that. And in the coming weeks, at some point in September, uh, during the Sunday school hour, we will have a baby shower, which will give you an opportunity to bring some of those items to that event. Uh, and then we can get that process rolling. Uh, one week from today, next Sunday, is our Back to School Sunday. Uh, it's a wonderful day that we celebrate every year in the life of our church. Uh, and so we invite you, if you are a student or if you're uh, an adult who carries a backpack to work every day, uh, we encourage you to bring those next Sunday. We will do a blessing of the backpacks, and we will also present our Bibles to our third grade students, and we will do that in both services. And so I believe we have four students going into third grade this year. Four, Greg gave me the official tally. Uh, and so we are excited to celebrate that with them. So we hope you're here with us for that. Uh, we are looking for a drummer for our launch service. And so if you or someone you know uh, plays the drums and would love to come be part of a wonderful worship team, uh, let us know, let Caleb know, and we would love to have their services on Sunday mornings. And then lastly, as we do every year, our church gives a scholarship uh, to some of our college students as long as they meet certain criteria. And this money is a, a great blessing to them. It helps them with their textbooks and the things they need for their semester. Uh, we have five students who received the scholarship this year, and I want to take a moment and recognize them. Uh, they are Madeline Atkins, Ben Cogbill, Miles Harward, Garrett Pritchard, and Larissa Temple. And so uh, they all met the criteria, and they are going to receive that money right at the perfect time because I I know all of those college students are in the process of moving in this weekend. And so on top of that, we ask that your prayers are with our college-age students as they begin another exciting year of their studies. And with that, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds as we gather together for worship.
Amen. On the heels of that prelude, I guess it's a good time to welcome Ms. Becky Moore to uh, Asbury this morning. She is uh, filling in. Diana is out of town. And so we are so thankful that Becky is with us and she is sharing her beautiful gift during our time of worship. As you are able, please stand for our call to worship this morning. With gifts of praise, we come to worship. With heartfelt prayers, we come to worship and pray. With open minds eager to grow, we come to worship and grow this day. I invite you to remain standing for our hymn of praise this morning, When We Would Neighbor Be. Loving God, flow through our worship and our lives. Expand your love in and through each of us and through our community of faith that we might create a house of such hospitality and love that all may feel truly welcome. Reach out through each of us and through our community of faith that we might reach out beyond our walls to the stranger, the lost, and the lonely and that we might discover how abundant your love truly is. Amen. Please be seated.
let us with one heart go to our Lord in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks on this day for this ability to gather, for this blessed opportunity to gather, to praise and glorify your name. God, I give you thanks for all who are gathered here in our sanctuary, for those who are joining us online. And God, we just are so humbled by this awesome moment that we find ourselves in. It's awesome because we come together in this space uh, all in different conditions and in different states. We come together with different hurts and with different fears and worries and concerns, uh, with different angers and frustrations. And we know, God, that you, as the God of peace and love, work powerfully in our lives to bring us peace, to bring us comfort, to let us know that you are here beside us and inside us, that you create us and sustain us. And so all we can do on this day is praise you. And God, help us to stay focused on your love in our lives. May we not become distracted by outside factors that take us away from your glory. Bring us back to you. This morning, God, we pray for all of those who are hurting. We pray for all of those who are lost. We pray for all of those, God, who do not see space in their lives for you. We know that you are still with them, that you walk with them, and that you love them. And we pray that they are called back to you. And we pray, God, that we, the church at Asbury, get to be part of that. Now, we pray this morning for our nation and its leaders. We pray for our state and its leaders and our city and its leaders. We pray that above all else, God, that they seek your counsel first and always as they find themselves in this position to lead. God, we pray for all of those in our congregation who are hurting today, who are in need of your healing touch, in need of your love, in need of your presence. We pray for Clifford Smith and for June Glazier. Pray for Fred Williams and for Barbara Clark. Pray for Megan Arnold and for Joyce Dennis. We pray for Gene Hammett. We pray for Mark Shimmer. We pray for all of those, God, whose names sit at the top of our hearts, the front of our minds, and the tips of our tongues. We know that you are at work in their lives in a mighty and powerful way. And so we give you thanks, knowing that your will is being done. Uh, we thank you for the gift of the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that comes upon us and shows us your will for our lives. May we constantly lean into that guiding force, and may we seek your desire for us instead of our own. And God, we thank you above all else for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the heavy price he paid on the cross, a price we could not pay ourselves. We thank you for his victory at the resurrection, a victory that broke us free from the chains of sin and death. We thank you for his earthly ministry, for all he taught us is teaching us and will teach us. And God, we thank you for the power of prayer, for the ability to bring our burdens and our joys and praises to you, to have this line to bring to you all that concerns us and all that brings us joy, and to know that you are there, you are listening, and you are at work. And we thank you for knowing how to pray. Jesus taught us that with the Lord's Prayer, which we'll now say together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In our message today, we're going to be in the uh, Luke's Gospel. We're going to look at a story that uh, should, should challenge us, and I think it should challenge us because sometimes uh, we can be like the Pharisees in this passage, and we can get very stuck in, in our own rut and, and not be willing to grow. 
and learn new things. And, and so uh, as, as part of this kingdom building effort that we have here at Asbury, we have to be willing to open ourselves up to uh, new places that God is calling us to and new challenges and, and new places where there's need. Uh, and if we do that, if we lean into our faith and we lean into what Christ teaches us, then our eyes are constantly opened. And so during this time of offering, uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit is upon you uh, and that you are moved in a way to give to the needs of our community today which are, which are ever-changing. Uh, but we are here, and we are thankful to be part of this Little Rock community, and we are thankful to be able to meet those needs. And so uh, with that in mind, I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Gracious, loving God, I thank you so much that we are here, that we are called to you, that through Christ we are made whole, that we are forgiven. We know that there are so many among us in our neighborhoods and in our schools and in our workspaces that don't yet know your love, that don't yet know Christ. And we know that as a church, we are called to be the hands and feet in this community to build your kingdom in the way that you desire us to do it. And we know that part of that is giving of our time and our talents and then, of course, of our resources. And so today, God, I ask that you challenge us to give in a way we have not given before in a way that we know will impact the community and impact the world. Let's call this in your son's holy name. Amen.
Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't get in their way, for such as these belong to the kingdom of God. And so I invite our kids to come now and join Jenny Curris for our children's message this morning. Jesus loves me, this I know. Either of you ever had a broken bone? Have you ever broken a bone? Have you ever had to use crutches for any reason? Well, you're pretty lucky. So how about everybody out there? Is anybody who's broken a bone? Okay, a lot of us. Um, so a couple years ago, I broke a little bone in my foot, and I got to wear this lovely thing for about two months. And so when you have something like that. Um, it's a little awkward, it's inconvenient, um, it hurts. Sometimes you can't do things that you want to do. But fortunately, for most of us who broke a, break a bone or something, it's temporary. So in a few months, we're all better and we can do the things that we want to. Sometimes people aren't that lucky. Sometimes I know friends who have to wear braces on their legs all the time and they can't do anything. So um, back in the Bible, they used to call those people lame. Uh, there are also people that are blind, people that have other conditions that keep them from doing what they want to do. And this is something that Jesus talks about in the message today. So Jesus was invited to a banquet, a party. And sometimes we're invited to parties and we come with all our friends that we usually get together with. But Jesus had a very interesting message for his host that day. He said, you shouldn't just invite your friends. I want you to invite people that are lame, blind, poor. That's kind of strange. But, but those are the people that Jesus really cared about. So for, in our perspective... Um, as we head back to school in a couple of weeks, we might be invited to a party, a back-to-school party or a birthday party. Um, and if not, certainly when we get back to school, we'll be out maybe on the playground, playing with people, even in the lunchroom, sitting at a table. And I think what Jesus wants us to do is to look around for those people that maybe aren't included. Maybe they have a condition that's visible and maybe they don't. But Jesus wants us to be his hands and feet in this world and to include those people and to make it a point to see that they aren't left out. So that's just a challenge to all of us and especially as we get ready to go back to school. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for letting us have a place to come together and hear your word. And as we enter a new school year, please help us to be mindful of those who maybe are not included. They're our neighbors too. And we know that you want us to include them and to be their friends and to show them what your love is all about. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the gospel according to Luke. Be in chapter 14, reading verses 1 through 24, and I invite you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to share a meal in the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees, they were watching him closely. A man suffering from an abnormal swelling of the body was there. Jesus asked the lawyers and Pharisees, does the law allow healing on the Sabbath or not? But they said nothing. Jesus took hold of the sick man, cured him, and then let him go. 
He said to them, suppose your child or ox fell into a ditch on the Sabbath day, wouldn't you immediately pull it out? But they had no response. When Jesus noticed how the guests sought out the best seats at the table, he told them a parable. When someone invites you to a wedding celebration, don't take your seat in the place of honor. Someone more highly regarded than you could have been invited by your host. The host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give your seat to this other person. Embarrassed, you will take your seat in the least important place. Instead, when you receive an invitation, go and sit in the least important place. When your host approaches you, he will say, friend, move up here to a better seat. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. All who lift themselves up will be brought low, and those who make themselves low will be lifted up. Then Jesus said to the person who had invited him, When you host a lunch or dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, or rich neighbors. If you do, they will invite you in return, and that will be your reward. Instead, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, crippled, lame, and blind, and you will be blessed because they can't repay you. Instead, you will be repaid when the just are resurrected. When one of the dinner guests heard Jesus' remarks, he said to Jesus, Happy are those who will feast in God's kingdom. Jesus replied, A certain man hosted a large dinner and invited many people. When it was time for the dinner to begin, he sent his servant to tell the invited guests, Come, the dinner is now ready. One by one, they all began to make excuses. The first one told him, I bought a farm and must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I bought five teams of oxen, and I'm going to check on them. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. When he returned, the servant reported these excuses to his master. The master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go quickly to the city streets, the busy ones in the side streets, and bring the poor, crippled, blind, and lame. The servant said, Master, your instructions have been followed, and there is still room. The master said to the servant, go to the highways and back alleys and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will taste my dinner. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning and uh, welcome to Asbury. I'm so glad to see you. Welcome to the end of our Won't You Be My Neighbor series. Over the uh, last few weeks, uh, we've been talking about how uh, Asbury in the past has uh, taken a lot of pride in uh, considering itself the friendliest church in town. And so in this series, we've, we've been talking about how we can do that again, especially as we head into the fall and head out of this surge. Uh, it's a wonderful time to invite friends and neighbors to come to church with you. Uh, back to School Sunday is a great opportunity to do that. That's next week. Uh, we're also going to have a Back to Church Sunday uh, on the second Sunday in September. And we're going to uh, call everybody that's still a member of Asbury United Methodist Church and invite them to come on back to church. Amen? And, and others who have fallen away from church over the past, uh, past uh, few years. So uh, I want you to get geared up for that, be sure and be spreading the news about that. So in the meantime, we've been talking about, uh, we've been looking in the Gospels, particularly in, in Luke's Gospel, and seeing how Jesus welcomed others. And uh, we began by saying that uh, Jesus invites us to leave the weeding to him, that all are welcome in God's house. We've also said that uh, when, when it comes to the nuts and bolts of making church guests feel welcome, you introduce yourself, you ask how you can help, and you introduce them to somebody else. Um, we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've looked at particular people that Jesus welcomed into God's family. Uh, we saw the story of the Good Samaritan, where an outcast is, is portrayed that way, is, is welcome. We've also, uh, last week, we saw a sinful woman, and we saw that God even welcomes sinners, thank God for that, into God's house. Amen? Today, we're going to look at a, a, a man who uh, had special needs, had disabilities, and how Jesus made him welcome at a dinner uh, to which he was invited. Uh, let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for being with us today in so many ways, wherever we are gathered. We pray now that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, you who are our strength and our friend, our rock and our redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Uh, Y'all know that Michelle and I love to travel, and the very first trip we ever took together was in 1998 uh, to Washington, D.C. 
uh, the Smithsonian Institution had a 20th anniversary Star Wars exhibit at the Air and Space Museum, and I saw that on the internet. I'm sure I was using you know, Net Netscape 2.0 or something like that, uh, for those that you remembered Netscape. Um, and I, I saw it and was like, man, I'd really love to go to that exhibit. They're showing you know, Darth Vader's costume and C-3PO and, and all that stuff. And uh, Michelle looked at me and she said, well, why can't we go? And so just a couple of weeks later, we hopped in the car and drove to Washington, D.C. Uh, we get to the hotel, and uh, we're dead dog tired. We are, like, decked out in T-shirts, and we are exhausted. T-shirts, shorts, sandals. And we uh, get checked in. We go down to the hotel restaurant. It was an authentic Burmese food restaurant, and it was fantastic. I never tasted anything quite like that. Then we hear, while we're eating, we hear this jazz coming up from the basement, just kind of rising from the basement. And so after the meal, we said, let's, let's go down there and, and listen. So we take the elevator down, the doors open, and live jazz fills the hallways that we're walking down. So we turn the corner to go in, and it's like, I don't know, none, none of y'all ever saw the movie Animal House, did you? Um, but it's like that scene where the white college kids walk into the black bar. You remember that? And they're like, hey, Otis, my man. And uh, they are shunned. Well, uh, we turn the corner. That club is jam-packed with black folks dressed to the nines. Every head turned. Every eye focused on us white, road-weary, T-shirt and short and Birkenstock wearing kids from Arkansas. So what do you think we did? <laughs> we turned around and hightailed it right out of there. And I want to be clear as I say that, that is not a reflection on the guests who were gathered in there that night. I'm sure that if we had walked on in, they would have made us feel more than welcome. Amen? But everything about that moment said to Michelle and me, you don't fit in here. Think about that sometimes when people visit Asbury. How do we say, not necessarily with our words, but how do we communicate to people, you don't fit in here? And what can we do to help people who are different from us feel like they're part of our family? Reminds me of a, a John Fogarty concert that Michelle and I attended uh, when we were living in Atlanta. We were poor graduate students. Both of, the, both of us attended graduate school on scholarships and grants and things like that. This was the first time that we ever saw a show at this particular venue. And it, I'll tell you, it wasn't like seeing Skinner at Riverfront. Amen. Uh, it was not even like seeing the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra at Riverfront. Um, every, every concert venue has a type of class system built into it. You know, the higher and further away from the stage you are, the, the cheaper the tickets. But Chastain Park Amphitheater, which has a different name now, uh, took that to a whole new level. There were three sections. The first section near the stage had tables, and there were room for six people at each table. The tables were extremely expensive, especially those. They were like $700 to $1,200 each, depending on how close to the stage the table was. And so, of course, that's where the rich folks sit. Corporations will buy those tables for, back then for, at $5,000 a pop for a season and would use them as an incentive or a reward for, uh, for employees and business partners. Chastain also allows you to bring your own food and drink, and we ain't talking Budweiser and Fritos, y'all. These people would bring in tablecloths and candelabras and these giant ice chests full of wine and cheese and gourmet cuisine. The second section in the middle has benches, kind of like in a football stadium and, stadium, and there's enough room there between the rows to set up a TV tray, and you can entertain yourself in that way. The third section, all the way at the very back, is called the lawn, and it's a strip of grass about 15 feet wide where the poor folks lie on their blankets and watch the show with binoculars. You can guess where Michelle and I were sitting for John Fogarty. Michelle went to get us some food, and I'm taking all this in and doing a little people watching, as I, as I like to do. And I see this guy, and he's dressed casually, and uh, he's got a glass of wine in his hand, and he's looking up there in the lawn, and I smiled at him. He smiled back, and he walked off. 
Michelle comes back a few minutes later with some food, and that guy walks up and stands next to us. He said this, he said, excuse me, but my wife and I have season passes for four box seats, and the couple we invited to come with us tonight were unable to find a babysitter. So they were unable to attend. I came back here to find a couple to come sit with us, and you were the only person who smiled at me. Would the two of you like to come and join us for the show? Well, each box, set, uh, box seat is worth about $150 a show, and this guy had four season passes for them. So you do the math. A aside from the color of our skin, Michelle and I had about as much in common with this guy as we did those folks back in the bar in D.C. But this time, we accepted his invitation and followed him. He led us all the way down front, and we enjoyed Aaron Neville and John Fogarty from about 15 feet from the stage. It was awesome. Once, Jesus received an invitation to come over for dinner, and it was a formal affair. Napkin on the charger, fish fork, dinner fork, salad fork to the left, dinner knife, fish knife, soup spoon, oyster fork to the right, etc., etc. Flawlessly set table. They had not even finished the lobster bisque before this guy comes in and takes his place at the table. Luke calls him dropsy guy in Greek. Dropsy simply means that he had an abnormal swelling in his body. And today we would probably put him on dialysis and that would clear that up. But in Jesus' day, we need to understand three things about this man. First of all, he would have looked and acted different than the other people at the dinner. Second, the people at the dinner would have blamed him or his parents for him being that way. And third, and most importantly, they did not invite this man out of the love of their hearts, they invited him to this dinner party to set a trap for Jesus. Jesus looks at these religious leaders. He knows what's going on. He says, is it legal to heal on the Sabbath or not? Well, they didn't want to answer that because if they said yes, they'd be giving Jesus permission to do something that they didn't want him to do. But if they said no, well, how would that look? So Jesus Luke says Jesus chucked Amy Vanderbilt, Miss Manners, and Emily Post out the window by taking hold of the man, restoring him, and sending him away. It was like Jesus dumped a bag of mulch on Grandma's Thanksgiving table. There's no go, your faith has made you well, no, your sins are forgiven, nothing. Jesus just grabs the guy, restores him, and sends him away. And then Jesus asks the people gathered there, which one of you, if your child or your cow fell down a well on the Sabbath, wouldn't pull it out? Well, they were too scared to answer that. And what's Jesus asking them? Which one of you, if your child, you see that man, that man with the strange swelling, the strange behavior, that man with disabilities that they brought to the party to trap Jesus, that dropsy guy, as Luke calls him, was God's beloved child. Which one of you, if your child? People made fun of him. People used him for their own selfish ends. But Jesus said to God, this man was a child worth more than gold or precious jewels. <laughs> then Jesus had the nerve to start telling people where to sit. Everybody there was fighting for the choicest seats. And he said, if you're invited to a wedding banquet, you shouldn't try to sit at or near the head table. Instead, you should sit way back at the back, or even better, just stand. That way, you won't be embarrassed if the host asks you to move. You might even be asked to move up front. After all, Jesus said, 
Those who strut around with big heads will have their bubbles burst, but those who put themselves down will be lifted up. And then Jesus had the audacity to turn and to tell his host whom to invite over for dinner next time. Looking at this fellow with his friends and family and rich neighbors, Jesus says, don't call your friends or your family or your rich neighbors. They might return the favor and invite you over. Instead, invite poor folks, crippled folks, lame folks, blind folks, and you will be blessed because they can't return the favor. God will pay you back later. You see, Jesus knew how easily we get the big head, how easily we give ourselves credit for our own success, how quickly we think that we are better than other folks who are less well-off than we. Jesus knew that we hoard God's blessings, that we scratch the backs of people who can scratch ours. But to us, Jesus says, lift others up and you will be lifted up by God. Lift others up and God will lift you up. It's important for us to note that Jesus isn't just telling us what kinds of people we should invite over to our homes for dinner. Jesus is telling us what kinds of people that we are to invite over to God's house. Over the course of 30 years, of 33 years, of all the neighbors Mr. Rogers invited to his television home, his favorite encounter was this one. Very fancy machine, but, you, but you're the one who makes it go. Right. Did it take a long time to learn how? No, not really. I what dug a wheel to the net only to, My first book, The Wheel of Tree, only took me about a day to learn how to use it. Gee, that's wonderful. Jeff, you, your mom and dad must be really proud of you. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Well, I know I am. Do you know that song that I sometimes sing called It's You I Like? Uh-huh. I'd like to sing that to you and with you. Okay, okay, sure. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair. But it's you I like. That's just beside you. But it's you I like. Every part of you. Your skin, your eyes, your feeling. Whether old or new. I hope that you remember. Even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like, it's you yourself, it's you, it's you I like. And it is you I like, Jeff. Jeff Erlanger and I are the same, we're the same age, born the same year, and uh, he grew up. He died, he died when he, in 2007, um, but bef as an adult, he went into politics, and it is because of Jeff Erlanger that uh, so many of our um, laws regarding equal accessibility for disabled persons are in place today. Amen? Jesus invites us to be his neighbor, not because of what we wear or how we do our hair or the color of our skin or our eyes, or even what we think or how we feel. Jesus invites us just as we are. Jesus welcomed us into God's family with all of our faults and our failures and even our brokenness. And so we welcome others who are broken just like we are.
and so we leave the weeding to him. We greet new friends we don't know. We ask them how we can help. We introduce them to another friend. And we remove all of the obstacles that get in their way of coming to Christ. It's so simple. But if we practice those simple things, Asbury truly will be the friendliest church in town and will make a difference in the lives of all of God's children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the people of God said, Amen. Let us pray. God, you are gracious, and you are good, and you welcome us into your family. In the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of all of the things we do that we shouldn't do, and all of the things that, that we leave undone that we should do, you love us. And you welcome us into your home each and every week. God, we pray that you will help us to see those who are different from us for whatever reason as objects of your love and your care, of friends and, as friends and neighbors, indeed as brothers and sisters. We pray that you will create in our church home a place where all are welcome. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the people of God said, Amen. I invite you to stand now as we affirm our faith uh, through the words of uh, an affirmation of faith called God Loves Us. It's printed in our bulletin. Let's join our hearts together. God loves us. God cares for us. God blesses us. God tends to us. We are God's precious fruit and faithful seed. God hears us. God helps us. God trusts us. God tries us. Sometimes we are more faulty seed than precious fruit. But no matter what, we are God. like to become a part of the Asbury Church family, you're welcome to do that today. If, uh, if you would like to join from another church, whether that's a United Methodist Church or any other denom Christian denomination, you're welcome to come forward on the singing of the, uh, the fourth verse of, of our next hymn. If, um, if you've never professed your faith in Jesus Christ and received the sacrament of baptism, I'd love to uh, visit with you about that. Nick and I are, are both happy to do that. Uh, just give us a holler. You're, uh, those of you who are watching online, this uh, invitation applies to you too. Uh, all you have to do is, is get in touch with me at the church office, and I'd be glad to talk with you about how to become a part of the Asbury Church family. Let's remain standing uh, now in, in, uh, as you are able, and we'll sing together Where Charity and Love Prevail, number 549. <laughs>
Why don't you come back next Sunday? Uh, for Back to School Sunday, we're kicking off a brand new series, and believe it or not, it's called Eat the Frog. It's called Eat the Frog. This was Nick's idea. I'm just kidding. It was Nick's idea, but it's called Eat the Frog, and I love it. Uh, so anyway, we're going to talk about, um, well, we'll tell you about that next week, but we're going to uh, talk about how we uh, serve Christ faithfully at school next week, and so we want to invite you to come Come back for that and, and bring a friend. I, do th- I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for the, those of us who are joining us online, either live or later on in the week. I, I'm sorry. Our, I don't know whether to apologize for it. We just didn't have internet last week, and so we're sorry that you missed, missed out on that. Uh, but uh, we're thankful that you were with us today, and it seems that everything did work. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here as well. Would you please receive this blessing? Go forth with Christ, with Christ above you to be your guide with Christ below you to hold you up, with Christ beside you to be your friend, and with Christ within you to give you hope, love, joy, and peace. Go forth with Jesus Christ your Lord. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.